Hey guys, thanks for coming to check out this video. I'm about to set up my November month in my bullet journal and this month's theme is Norway as voted by you guys last time. So if you're new here, a big welcome. I hope you enjoy and let's get into it. Hope you guys enjoyed that little start. I tried to go for like an 80s theme with there and basically to tribute the Norwegian band Aha. And I love the song Take On Me. I would love to use it, but copyright reasons I couldn't. But yeah, I really liked the energy of that song and thought I'd include it here in the beginning. I hope you liked it. So onto the cover page for our November month. I wanted to explore the Aurora Borealis straight away as soon as Norway was chosen. I thought of those beautiful northern lights that I are definitely on my bucket list and I am dying to see. Um, so I imagined that myself or you know our traveler girl has arrived in Norway and has gone straight out in her woolies. She's all rugged up and she's ready to see the northern lights. Um, now these amazing lights in the sky are only visible from certain areas in the world and one of the most prominent ones is Norway. The further north you go on the globe, the higher the chance you'll get of seeing these beautiful lights. And the city of Tromsø is known to be one of the best spots right here in Norway. So once I knew that I wanted to draw the Aurora Borealis in my spreads, I thought of what media am I going to use to try and get that softness across um, you know I just don't think it would work with normal pencils and it wasn't going to work with textures so I had this idea of doing it all on a black sheet like a black night sky and then using my Carbothello pencils which are basically like a pastel so they're like a pastel pencil and they're very soft and easy to blend so they actually worked really well for the sky I was able to merge those colors together and get a real soft glow um, and then I kept my girl and the landscape areas just very simple in just using like a white, white pencil. Um, the white pencil I used is actually a watercolor pencil. It was the one that came out the strongest on the black paper because a lot of the others were just kind of blending in and weren't showing enough. I really love trying a whole bunch of different media in my spreads because it's kind of keeping your skills alive and trying new things but it also just keeps it interesting when you're looking through your journal or you're working on it each month it's like it, it never gets dull because it's like a new experience for you each time um, and now I'm adding some dots into the sky to get the sky looking a little bit more alive I'm just using a white gel pen for that and I'm also using that across her face just where there's highlights that would be shown just to set her apart from that background. I also love to include the month that I'm working on into the drawing somehow. So I wrote it on the side of her earmuff, which I thought really worked well. So the trouble with pastels is that they do tend to rub off on other pages or on your hands. They can be quite messy. So a way to keep them stuck down to the paper is by fixing them with a fixative. I didn't have any fixative at the time, but hairspray actually works just as well. So I grabbed some hairspray and sprayed it on there. And then I just touched up the colors if they, if they faded a little bit. And then now they should be fine in my journal and I won't be smudging it anywhere. And now I'm on to cutting it in half and sticking it into the journal, always leaving a few mils either side of the spine so that it can fold properly. And then I'm going with my favorite part of these cover pages where I do a Dutch door down one side that acts as kind of like a bookmark and it just adds a bit of interest to it. Um, otherwise it can just, I don't know, look a little bit simple. And I love to add a little bit of detail here and there. So I've added a nice wave down the right hand side and then using a glass to form a circle in the top right corner, I cut it out and then that will reveal on the page beneath the calendar month. I didn't want to have that tiny little bit of white page showing, so I did just bring that curve forward so that I could have it all be black on the side there. I 
I love finding things just around me to make the circles in my spreads. I've used coins before and cups and plates and I'll, I'll, you'll probably see me do it often in these setups where I use a random thing to make a circle. And in this case, it was this perfect skinny glass and it was just the right size that I needed. So now I have this nice circle in the top right corner that really just makes the impact on the page. And that is the finished cover page. I'm so glad that I went ahead and used something I'm not using regularly, and that's those pastel pencils. I think it worked so well for the sky. And now it's time to move on to the calendar spread. So it's time to get that glass back out and create our circle title in the top right corner. So because I already had the full word of November on the cover page, I decided just to use the first three letters and I wanted to use a font that would go with that sort of um, astronomy look. So I've gone for a really modern astronomy inspired kind of font, but I think it worked really well. And then keeping with that circular theme that I have begun, I'm going to do my cleaning tasks this month in a circle form. And I've also done the flag of Norway in, the, in another circle shape as well. And then just a very basic calendar where I put all the birthdays that I like to remember or special occasions that I need to write down just a little reminder for. So after colouring in the flag and putting in my gold elements that I love to add to my spreads, I felt that this page lacked something, so I thought this was a good opportunity to fill it up with some more symbols of Norway. And that first symbol that I wanted to include was the Norway Norwegian <laughs> national animal, which is the lion. So I've popped a lion drawing up at the top right, and I've just drawn him in a basic line only, not really much shading, just a few little cross hatches here and there, um, just to give it a quite a graphic look. And then added some gold and just tried to fill up this page a little bit because I felt that it was too, too plain. Here I'm just filling in my cleaning tasks for the month. So I flick back to my annual tasks and schedule them out for the month. I'm just adding a few stars at the bottom and I kept making an error of drawing the lion too far over and it was coming through on that cover page. So I just drew some gel pen, some white gel pen over the top and nobody will ever know. It'll be fine. I mean, I'll know and I'll get annoyed by it, but I'll hopefully get over it quite quickly. <laughs> now there was something missing to this bottom right hand section and I tried to think of what I could do, maybe decorate it with some washi tape. And I'll talk more about the washi tape later on in the video. Um, but I ended up just deciding to put a nice quote down there because I always like a bit of a quote um, throughout the month if I wanted to focus on something in particular, something to make me feel good. So I found this awesome quote by Roald Dahl, who's actually um, from Norwegian parents. And it is, if you are good, life is good, which I thought was quite a nice, simple quote just to live by really, be a good person and life will be good. And now that I've filled in every blank spot on the page, I felt like it was done. Hooray! And let's move on to the next spread. Now this page is where I track my needs and wants. So it's basically a list of things that I may need to buy or just want to buy. And it stops me from making unnecessary purchases throughout the month. Um, so I wanted to theme this one as a couple of things. I'm actually tying in a very famous artist, possibly the most famous artist of Norway, Edward Munch. And he was an expressionist and did an incredibly famous painting called The Scream, which I challenge you if you haven't seen it, like you would have seen this millions of times in your life because the face painted in it is one of the most iconic images of art of all time. So instead of actually recreating it exactly, I thought I would change the character in it to a character from Roald Dahl's story. So I mentioned him before. He was actually born in Wales, but he's from a Norwegian family. And so he obviously wrote heaps of children's books and one of them being Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Super famous. And one of the characters from it, Violet Beauregard, turns into a blueberry. And I thought it would be cute to do the same position that Edward Munch had done with his screen painting and have her doing that. So I've tried to keep to the style of Munch's artwork, but I found it so difficult because this style is just completely 
like left field for me. Um, very tricky to grasp. And I don't think it turned out that great, but it was fun. Um, and yeah, because I loved this painting, I've known it about it since high school. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool to do that. An interesting fact that I found out about this painting was that it was actually painted four times by Munch, two pastels and two painted versions. And the pastel version actually sold for a record 120 million US dollars in 2012. So that was incredible to me and was actually the reason I intended on using pastels. Well, part of the reason I tried to use pastels throughout this setup as well, because it just tied back to the very famous Munch. Okay, moving on to my meal planner. This is where I usually exhibit the national food of the country, but I decided to go with my first picture in my head of Norway, which was salmon. I've always heard of Norwegian salmon and how important it is, but I didn't realize was that Norway is actually the country that introduced Japan to eating raw salmon. I did read that it took about 15 years for Norway to convince Japan that you could eat the salmon raw. And when they finally did in 1995, which is so recent, um, they it just went crazy. And now Norway is the, their big, biggest export is salmon. And I'm glad they did because I just adore salmon sushi. It's definitely my favorite one. So yeah, interesting stuff. And that is what ends the meal plan page. And now we can move on to the mind map. So if you've seen my previous setups, I always like to do a face of someone from the country that I'm visiting. Um, it might be someone famous or it might just be someone culturally that's wearing their dress or something like that. But someone beautiful that just kept popping up in my research is the crown princess of Norway, Met Marit. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, now this lady was, she was a Norwegian commoner and she married the heir to the throne, Crown Prince Hakon. And when she did marry him or when they first got engaged, there was a lot of controversy around who she was and that because she wasn't royal, um, there was lots to delve into, into her past and her family. And so I feel kind of sorry for her because it makes me think of all the beautiful movies I watch about um, princes and princesses. Um, I love those kind of B-class chick flicks. I've probably mentioned that before, but her life I think would make a great chick flick because she was, yeah, just this regular person um, with lots of ups and downs and she met the prince and they look incredibly happy. They're a really sweet looking couple. Um, so I thought I would draw her in this spread and hopefully if there's any Norwegians watching this, you can let me know what you think of Met Marit now. I know there's been lots of controversy about her, but I'd love to know if she's actually well liked now by the Norwegian people or is there still issues about her not being quite right for the royal family? Um, yeah, that would be interesting to know. So let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts on that. As to how I'm drawing her, I've decided to stick with that circle theme. And this time I thought I would just do a black and white drawing in pencil and I'm also using a black pencil to get the really dark contrast in and then I use a little bit of an eraser to get the highlights as well. So I tried to do this um, quite realistic but it was quite small so very hard to get the detail that I particularly like to work in and then I added in some nice gold across the headband um, that she's wearing headband it's not a headband it's a crown um, and the flowers the flowers that I've done on this are the national flowers and Norway actually has two so one is called the bergfru which is found in the mountains and then the other one that they have is called purple heather and that one is much more commonly spread across um, Europe and in particular Norway and now onto decorating this page. I wanted to give it a really royal vibe. So I decided to use some gold gilded washi tape. Now these washi tapes were actually sent to me by the washi tape shop. Thank you so much washi tape shop for sending these to me. They're actually the first business that's reached out to me. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. I really love their products. I've used them before, as I've mentioned in previous videos, but yeah, to send me a bunch of stuff that I can go through and use on the channel 
channel is really, really kind. So thank you for that. Um, I really appreciate it. And if anyone loves these, you can feel free to click on the link in the description box and check out Washi Tape Shop for all of their lovely washi tapes. Um, so yeah, I went through the ones that they sent me and there were so many to choose from. There was a couple that stood out as quite royal looking and Norwegian. So I've gone for this one, which is a bunch of like gold roses and flowers on it. And I think it just adds so much to the spread um, by having that real beautiful gold just popping out of the page. Um, and finish this page off with just the words mind map. And then this one is done and that's how I I use this one to dump all information. If it doesn't have a place in my journal, it goes onto this sort of like a brain dump page, which I like to call my mind map. If you haven't been here before, that's why it's called mind map because I don't like the word dump. Side note as well, the whole time I was drawing this lady, she reminded me so much of Renee Russo, the actress. If anyone else gets that vibe, let me know. I also added some gold down the bottom around the mind map because I felt like it was too blank, but I do wish I could go back in time and take that away. I don't like it, but it's there now, so I'll have to live with it. And now moving on to my goodliness spread. Now this is the page that um, most people would call their habit trackers. Um, so it's where I track my habits, but they're all the good habits, hence the name goodliness. Um, I basically always start with the grid how I like it, which is this like long section of grid lines um, with each of the habits in there, like drinking water and exercise, etc. So the first thing I decided to decorate this spread with is actually a penguin. This was such a cute little fact that I found. The Colonel in Chief of the Norwegian King's Guard is actually this penguin. His name is Sir Nils Olaf and he is the brigadier. He's a brigadier in the military. He even has a little military insignia on his right flipper. Um, and yeah, he actually outranks some military personnel, which I found quite hilarious. I had no idea that this was a thing. So he's like the mascot for the Norwegian King's Guard and he lives in Edinburgh in Scotland. And he's actually the third penguin to take this title. So he is actually Sir Nils Olaf III. Um, and this is all since 1972. So a super quirky little fact there. And then I thought I would really like to showcase how forward thinking Norway is with being eco-friendly and looking after the planet. So I wanted to try and symbolize some of the main things that Norway does really well on this and that a few of those are plogging. So plogging is a Swedish invented form of jogging where you pick up litter as you're jogging and it's gone mad in Norway and uh, it's happening here in Australia as well. I love the idea. So you just go out and jog and you collect all the rubbish, which is great. And then I've also got a wind farm in there, which is showing how they're very conscious of renewable energy sources. And it was recently announced that Norway will hold the biggest floating wind farm offshore to help power oil and gas plants and reduce the carbon emissions that they make by an immense amount. So that's good news. And then we've got electric cars. Norway has by far the highest amount of electric cars for the population. It's got 3.3% of the population have electric cars now. Another thing that I found amazing is about the fjords. So the fjords, I haven't even mentioned in the setup yet. This will be in the next week's setup, but the fjords um, are everywhere and there are so many of them. And unfortunately, a lot of the ships and the ferries provide a lot of carbon emissions, um, making them quite a polluted area. So by 2026, they have um, set the goal that they will be no ferries or ships that aren't controlled solely by electric power. So that is great to hear. And then the last two ones that I just want to quickly mention is the way they get you to reuse your, to recycle your bottles is by putting a pant fee on it, which means you just pay a little bit more when you're buying your can or your bottle of drink. And then when you're finished, you need to bring it back to this pant machine and that will give you that extra money back. So it just, it just forces you to recycle. And then the last thing that I wanted to get in here is their important waste management where they sort waste to not only help with fueling power like incinerators run by waste that they import from other countries, but also their recycling that they have systems set up everywhere that work really good for the country. 
So they're doing so much for the environment. Thought that was really important. So that's why I've put it on my goodliness spread. And that is it for this page. Whew. And now we are moving on to the final page of the setup. This is my first weekly setup for my agenda. This is where I basically have a task list of things I need to get done throughout the week. And I write them in a list down on the right hand side page. And then anything else that I need to remember on the individual daily boxes and then cross them off as I achieve them. Now, as I mentioned before, I really wanted to do the fjords in this setup but I was honestly overwhelmed with how much content I could have got from Norway. There was so much to choose from and some really important things that I didn't want to miss out on. So this one here was so important. It's actually a seed vault and I had never heard of this before and I'm so glad I know about it now because it's an amazing thing. They've got a massive seed vault in Norway um, and it basically holds millions of seeds from around the world in case of a nuclear war or an absolute global crisis where we need to rebuild the planet from these seeds which is you know very scary and horrible to think of but the fact that it's there it, it's a nice thought and it was just too nice to miss out um, so I had to do something reflecting that so I've chosen to do three little jars that contain you know some little seeds of life right there um, and I thought this was a nice way to end the setup on a positive note, um, thinking of all these beautiful seeds being held in case there was ever a crisis where we needed them. And not to worry, I will explore the fjords next week in my weekly setups. I can't leave them out because they are such an important part of Norway. So they will get a chance to shine in next week's setup. And so now while we take a little flick back through the full setup, I would just ask you that if you haven't been here before that you consider subscribing. I do a lot of videos like this and lots of bullet journal content or arty related videos. I would love to have you on board as one of my subscribers. And in next week's video, when I'm setting up the weekly spreads for this month, I will start to get a little bit Christmassy and talk about the um, way I'm gonna choose countries next year. Um, obviously I've done the countries starting with the first letter of each month. I'm not going to do that next year, but I am still going to do a country based theme. So I'll explain to you how I'm going to set up the voting for that because I've, lo I've loved having you guys help me choose each country. It's been really fun. Um, and so if you want to join me in next week's video for that, please do. And we will work out what we're doing for December as well. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up to help me out. Thank you for watching and I look forward to chatting with you down in the comments and then seeing you guys next week for my video. Have a good one and I will see you soon. Bye.